Edgar Calquebro is a Philippines analyst and also a teaching fellow in the School of International Relations at the University of St. Andrews, and he joins us now live from Abu Dhabi. Welcome to the show. Um, talk to us about the legacy of uh, the Marcos family today and why uh, and how Ferdinand Marcos Jr. has emerged as the front runner. Yes, thank you for having me. Um, just a slight correction. I'm at the Anwar Gorgash Diplomatic Academy in uh, Abu Dhabi at the moment. Um, it's, a, it's a very good question. Um, the legacy, of course, as we saw in the, uh, in the clip here, is, uh, is a very long and uh, problematic one, of course. Um, since coming back to the Philippines after the exile, after the ousting in the People Power Revolution in 1986, coming back in the early 1990s, the, the family has been working really hard to uh, come back into uh, public office. Mm. Uh, we know that, uh, obviously, the current uh, frontrunner in the presidential election has already been elected uh, congressman and senator. His sister is currently a senator as well. And a lot of these campaigns that we've seen in social media in, in the last couple of years are really trying to overcome and paint the picture in a completely different light. So, um, just sorry to interrupt there, so would you say the, the image uh, or the history has, has been forgotten, old wounds have been forgiven? It, it seems like, mm -hmm. like it, but obviously there are a lot of critics still around, and, uh, but the younger generation seem not to be overly worried about these things, and uh, that is one of the, the main in, in the previous uh, election in, in 2016, when Fernand Marcos finished runner-up after the current vice president, Lenny Robredo, is obviously the, the other top candidate in the presidential election. He, he, did, he was supported by mainly the, the elder generation as well, while uh, Lenny Robredo held most of the younger voters. And in this election so far, we will see really if there has been a switch, uh, a turnaround in these uh, mm -hmm. uh, figures. So Ferdinand Marcos Jr. is uh, currently the front runner. What would uh, his potential victory mean for the Philippines? Most likely it will be a continuation of what the Duterte policies and approach has been. Uh, it will be a continuation of this strongman approach, mm -hmm. uh, of course, continuation uh, with the uh, infrastructure, some uh, analysts have obviously pointed towards a, perhaps an even closer ties to China, although Ferdinand Marcos has much better relations with the West uh, than Duterte. And a lot of the votes that are, we see are also because of Duterte's daughter, Sara Duterte, mm -hmm. is running as his vice president. And talk to us about uh, Sara Duterte. What, what chances uh, does the daughter of the current president have? She has very good uh, chances, and uh, she is a very popular um, candidate. And uh, and many would argue that many of the votes that uh, Bong Bong Marcos has now is thanks to Sara Duterte running alongside him, um, because she was the front runner in the pre-election surveys and so on in order to become the next president. And to many surprises. Sorry, Ricardo, I just wanted to ask you just your, your gut feeling who will win, Ferdinand Marcos Jr. or uh, Sara Duterte? Well, she, Sara Duterte will most definitely win the vice presidential election, mm -hmm. and uh, Bong Bong is the clear favorite to win the presidential election. He's running against Lenny Robredo. Um, and although the thing in, in the Philippine elections is that there are very often upsets on, on the last day. So Lenny Robredo, although she is falling behind in, in the surveys and in the polls, she might actually upset uh, Ferdinand Marcos. But my gut feeling is that Ferdinand Marcos will win the election. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Ricard Jalkebro. I appreciate your time and your analysis here on TRT World Today. Thank you.